So I did a what is mesh Wi-Fi video a while ago and everybody seemed to like it, but it's been about four years since I made that video and well, a lot of things have changed, especially the options for mesh routers and the features that they now have. I figured it was time to do an updated what is mesh Wi-Fi. Speaking of newer mesh Wi-Fi routers, full disclosure, Minim, the company that makes all of the routers for Motorola, sent me their latest mesh Wi-Fi router, the Motorola Q14 for this video. And I honestly think it has a lot of really cool features that we'll get to a bit later. First, what is mesh Wi-Fi? Now, normally you have a single modem that pulls the internet signal into the house, usually via an ethernet or a coax cable, and that is connected to a router. Sometimes you'll have a router modem combo all in one though. But that then projects that signal across your home in a sphere from it in the form of Wi-Fi. Now that Wi-Fi signal then allows your devices to then connect to each other or through the modem and out to the internet. Cats. So. In a mesh system though, there is a main hub that in a similar way connects to the modem in the same way a traditional system does, or even some mesh systems or modem router combos as well. But the mesh system has satellite hubs that are functionally identical to your main one that can be placed around your space, generally on the edge of the first one's range to further the Wi-Fi network range beyond that. Now you might think of Wi-Fi extenders or Wi-Fi repeaters when you think of extending your Wi-Fi network coverage, but these are not as good as mesh systems and Actually, nowadays, a lot of them are being replaced with mesh systems for a number of reasons. Firstly, is speed. With a Wi-Fi extender or repeater, it essentially takes all of the data it receives from the original router over the Wi-Fi network and repeats it out to your devices and vice versa for data coming back from the devices going back to the router. Now, because of the way it handles this generally over the same Wi-Fi network the original router is using, it can create extra congestion on the network as it adds to the wait list of things all needing to transmit on the same frequencies and essentially just slows things down. In a mesh Wi-Fi system though, the hubs all receive and send data to each other, including the main one and then out to the internet via a specific wireless connection called a dedicated backhaul usually. And then each hub projects its own Wi-Fi network that your devices connect to like normal. This means the traffic going between the hubs doesn't take up valuable bandwidth that your devices need to use. Also, unlike a repeater or an extender that will usually actually have a separate SSID or network name, you'll sometimes see network and network extension, for example. That actually requires the devices to know both and then switch when crossing from one area to the other. And in the overlapping areas, get a little confused on which to use. Now, mesh Wi-Fi, on the other hand, can create one large network all with the same SSID and password and can intelligently move devices from one node to the others as needed. So everything is a lot more seamless. The mesh Wi-Fi also has built-in protocols that are self-forming, as it's called, in that they can automatically decide the best path through the network for each device's data and adjust that in real time. They're also self-healing, in that even if a node gets bogged down with traffic or loses power, let's say, the network will automatically reroute data around it as needed and bring it back into the mesh network whenever it's ready. And all of that translates to a much more efficient network with much faster speeds. Next, setting mesh networks up is stupid easy. They all have apps to help set them up. All you have to do is plug in the first one to your modem, open the app to then set it up, and then plug in the next one wherever you need, open the app and select to extend the network, and then repeat for all of the hubs. The Motorola Q14 here makes this stupid easy and adding a node is as easy as scanning a QR code. It also allows you to easily manage and secure the devices on your home network and it'll even monitor the network 24 seven for suspicious activity, isolate compromised devices to prevent spread, lets you create a guest network so you can separate devices from your usual Wi-Fi network to protect them. You can even adjust control and monitor devices on your own and it has free parental controls you can use to block certain sites or limit usage all in the app and even adjust control and monitor the network as well as has free parental controls that you can use to block certain sites or limit usage all in their Moto Sync app. Next up is of course range. And I don't just mean furthering the signal's reach, which it does. I also mean better flexibility and better faster signal in more places. So, 
Of course, as you put these nodes at the edge of each one's signal, the new node then extends that signal further, which is the main reason for people getting a mesh network, obviously. But also these mesh nodes don't require anything but a power cable, so you can be pretty flexible with where you put them to extend your network. And it doesn't hurt that routers like the Motorola Q14 here look good enough to blend in with your home decor either. They also all usually have more ethernet ports on each node, and because all the nodes act the same way on the network, you can plug in other devices that need a wired connection into any of these nodes, giving you more flexibility as to where you can put those things, instead of, you know, crowding them all next to the main router. And again, because of the efficiency and dedicated backhaul that usually has higher speeds, like like this Motorola Q14's 5.4 gigabits per second, which is obviously much higher than the 1000 megabits per second on wired ethernet that you'll usually get. So their actual speeds won't be affected that much. Also, if there's a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port like there is here on the Motorola Q14, you can plug in devices that can use speeds that are higher than 1000 megabits per second into there, like say my NAS here, to be able to access the files there over the local network much faster than the usual 1000 megabit per second bottleneck some other routers might have. You can also extend your five gigahertz network, which is the very common, much faster Wi-Fi standard compared to the 2.4 gigahertz, and it just has slightly shorter range. When you have one router, you may have signal to the end of your apartment, let's say, but it's oftentimes the much slower 2.4 gigahertz band that it's using, since again, that frequency can reach further than the five gigahertz one. But in a mesh system like this one, each hub can project its own five gigahertz connection, effectively covering your place in more five gigahertz signal, making everything that can use that signal faster, even away from the main router. <music> Lastly, something I've personally been excited about that has changed again since I did that first video in the last few years is the introduction of Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. I have full explainers on them both that I'll link below if you want to deep dive into how they work, but for this video, suffice it to say that Wi-Fi 6 is quickly becoming the new standard for Wi-Fi, with pretty much every newer device in the last few years having it now, and it allows for faster speeds, more devices to be connected, better battery life for your devices that are connected, and a bunch of other clever features. And now, a lot of the newer mesh routers also support it which is great. Also, Wi-Fi 6E, which is short for Wi-Fi 6 Extended, simply introduces a new six gigahertz band for even faster Wi-Fi at the expense of range. Similar to how 2.4 gigahertz works the furthest, then five gigahertz was introduced and has shorter range, but it's faster. Six gigahertz is a bit shorter than five, but even faster. And a lot of devices actually now support 6E, including new flagship phones and even laptops. So with a mesh system that supports that, like this Motorola Q14 that we're using, you can have each node project 2.4 gigahertz, five, and also that super fast six gigahertz as well. So what are the downsides to mesh Wi-Fi? Well, the main one is gonna be price. These systems are generally more expensive than the non-mesh versions of them, and it makes a lot of sense there's more hardware frankly. But this is something that has also changed over the last few years. As the technology has become more available, the costs have come down. You can usually now find mesh systems for only a little bit more than their non-mesh counterparts. And with all of the benefits we just talked about, it kind of makes getting a mesh system nowadays a no-brainer. And that Motorola Q14 that we've been using for this video is by far the least expensive mesh Wi-Fi system I've seen that supports that six gigahertz support for much faster Wi-Fi speeds for devices that support 6E. But it also even costs less than a lot of other mesh systems with similar speeds that don't support 6E. So if you're curious about it, I'll leave links below in the description as usual with the best price that I could find on it, as well as keep those updated as best as I can. There you go. Shout out again to Minim for helping me make this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about mesh systems. I also tried to uh, use your comments from the last video to improve this version of it. So let me know if I missed anything else and I'll try to answer them in the comments as best I can. But I'm gonna run around this house now and do more speed tests like the nerd that I am. Night. Bird. You're leaving? Thanks, appreciate it. Plane. Or, or spaceship. Rocket. It sounds like a rocket.